Hello again, one and all, and welcome to episode 390 of Love Adverse Sense with me, Persilase, live on YouTube, the second episode from the uh, following the return from the extended summer break. Thank you very much to all of you for tuning in. And as I said in the previous video, thank you very much for all of the wonderful, generous, kind, sweet, warm-hearted messages that you've been spending, spending, sending uh, over the last few weeks. First comment for this video goes to Elias, who says, uh-oh, and I guess that's because we're reviewing the new Frederick Mount. Have you smelt it yet, Elias? Jeff Sheen says, heaven should wait. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, uh, Maudlin says, heaven must wait. <laughs> and Daniel says, your shirt looks like the old iPad wallpaper, completely gorgeous. You're right, actually. Yeah, you're right. So, wash packaging, old iPad wallpaper. Dev says, <laughs> I'm wearing vintage Samsara EDT today. Gosh, you do smell really, really wonderful. Um Looking forward to this, says Paul Perfemo. JJ, hello, JJ, says, uh, ooh, your comment has gone. Says, I'm fortunate to have a slower work day today. Oh, and your comment has just slipped off the top of the page. I'm excited to hear Persilace's thoughts. Very, 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 very kind. I hope you're well. Uh, Woozy says, hopefully the performance is more rose et queer and less angelique sous la pluie. Mm. Uh, I, I, I think we need to start, really. This is probably one of the most... Um, anticipated releases of this season. Brand new from Frederick Mal. Uh, it is a scent called Heaven Can Wait. Um, and it isn't just brand new from Frederick Mal. It is also brand new from Jean-Claude Elena, which is uh, exciting in itself. Um, as a lot of you will know, before he became in-house perfumer at Hermès, uh, Jean-Claude Elena composed lots and lots of scents for Frederick Mal. Um, and then they kind of had to part company. Um, but since he's finished at Hermès, he's given Frédéric Mal uh, Rose and Queer, which uh, I think got mixed reviews. And I think I'm right in saying that this is only his second post-Hermès scent for him. Um, oh, Woozy says, speaking of Jean-Claude Elena, apparently he's currently tied to a new brand. Really? Anyway, I didn't know that. Um David says, the only positive review, what of this I've read, is from Eddie Buliki in Fragrantica, and he rarely likes any scent. Really, are people not liking this one so much? Okay, well, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag slightly. And so my screen just went completely green here. I have no idea whether it did the same for you. This is this is the gremlins. This is the gremlins telling us that heaven should wait. So um, I'm just going to assume that everything is still fine. Um... I'm going to say that as, as soon as I, well, let's start talking about it then. So I got my sample of this um, a little while ago and it was with a huge amount of nervousness, a huge amount of trepidation that, uh, that I sprayed it. Um, why the trepidation and the nervousness? Because I think that, you know, current Frederick Mal, Estee Lauder Frederick Mal, um, is is not the same as the original Frederick Mal, but then I also realised that you know there is no way that he could have stayed the same. The brand is now nearly a quarter of a century old, um, and there is no way that they could have that they would have been that they should have been create they should be creating now the sort of things that they were creating in the year two thousand. Um, and but but also I was really not a huge fan of the scent that they released last year, the Uncut Gem from Maurice Roussel. I was definitely much more taken with um, Synthetic Jungle, which we got the year before that, the one done by Anne Flippo. Um, but, you know, despite the fact that, would it be fair to say that in recent years there have been more misses than hits? I don't know. Did, despite, you know, music for a while I wasn't so crazy about. Some of the some of the kind of the, the, the later Arabian ones that he released I wasn't quite so crazy about. D despite all of that, it is it is still... A brand that that I that I love that I consider to be one of my you know my favorite brands of all time you know the, the, it is still the brand that has given us Portrait of a Lady and Carnal Flower and Geranium pour Monsieur and En Passant and Iris Poudre and oh my goodness you know the list goes on and on and on uh, Eau de Magnolia and uh, Cologne and De etc 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 so I guess it's because of that that I feel that the stakes are higher because I really really do want to love every single Frederick Mal scent that comes out. Um, and so, as I say, I sprayed this with some trepidation, but then I immediately got this huge smile on my face and I thought, Jean-Claude and Frederick have done it and they've actually done the kind of thing that they do best because this is, to me, a very, very, very definite homage 
to a classic scent. And I've had a sneaky peek at the press materials. And in the press material, they say that it is inspired by a classic French scent, but they don't say which one. And I think that's because of the sort of the fact that this is essentially a Lauder brand. So when they when they released Synthetic Jungle, they uh, were, were able to say that, that that was inspired by, you know, grand 70s green scents like Estee Lauder Private Collection. But I guess because this is from a completely different brand, although it's a it's a, it's a discontinued scent, um, that they can't mention it. So let's have a smell. I, I, I really, really, I'm very, very taken with this one. I haven't got to know it all that well yet, but I did wear it straight away that first day when I smelled it. So, what is it? It's it is it is uh, unashamedly and overtly uh, a spicy scent. Where's my press blurb for it? It's very, very brief, or press release rather, and it is it is suitably prosaic and true Frederick Mao style. Um, And it, it, it is a bit of a geek fest. And I think the best uh, Frederick Mal perfumes are geek fests. They, they, they push all sort of, you know, geek-tastic buttons in your head. Because first of all, it makes you think of um, something that Jean-Claude Elena did for Frederick Mal years ago. He did L'Eau d'Hiver, which is beautiful. L'Eau d'Hiver is like a, a, a sort of essay on cooler spices, cold spices. So is Angelique sur la pluie to a, to a certain extent. And and Lodiver was also inspired very very directly, very overtly by Garlin's Apelonde. I uh, absolutely adore Lodiver, one of my absolute favourite scents of all time. Um, it it is it is a kind of cool stroke, warm, contradictory, paradoxical winter water. Um, this one is Jean Claude Elena saying, "Okay, you think I'm the cardamom guy." you think I'm the intellectual cool spices guy, I'm going to show you that I can do something interesting with warm spices as well. When I was smelling it and wearing it, um, I remembered a kind of handover interview that I attended in Paris, an Hermès interview, when Jean-Claude Elena had launched, uh, or they had launched his Jardin de Monsieur Lee, but by that point it had already been announced, been announced that Christine Nagel was... Um, going to be his successor. And so they were both present um, at this event. And somebody asked him how he thought the Hermes style would change. And he, he said that his perfumes were usually more suited to a kind of Kim Novak figure, whereas he thought that Christine Nagel would be more Monica Bellucci more sort of overtly, openly sexual, sensual. This to me is like Jean-Claude Adela saying, I can do Monica Bellucci too. Um, it's a big preamble here. What do you get? You get, you get peppery spices, you get clove, you get sharp berries, you get ombrette seed. Um, you can kind of see them individually and detect them individually, but they come together to create a, a beautiful, cohesive whole as well. And, 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 which one do I think it's inspired by? I think this is their contemporary version of Caron's Poivre from the 50s. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Poivre, I mean, I could be wrong, I could be wrong, and the next time I meet Frederick Mal or Jean-Claude Elena, whenever that may happen, I'm going to sort of say to them, would you be able to tell me whether it's poivre or not? And may maybe maybe they're not able to say. But I do actually have a few drops of vintage poivre parfum. Um, Jura says it also gives me elements of 31 Rue de Cambon. Y yes, absolutely, those sorts of things. Oh, lots of iris here as well. But beautifully done. And I, I did kind of have to go back to my little... Poivre sample. This is one of very, very few vials. I mean, I've got just a few drops of this. One of very, very few things that I actually keep in the fridge. Um, just a tiny little Tupperware container that I've got that stays in the fridge to look after them. Um, now, Poivre, of course, even though it was called pepper, also had a huge clove note, right? Um, 
and it, it was very, very peppery too, but it was a massive, massive clove note. And I guess that was the thing that meant that eventually it had to be discontinued because you just couldn't keep using all of that eugenol. To my mind, um, this one, Heaven Can Wait, is kind of like saying, okay, so given the restrictions, given current tastes, given modern sensibilities, how could we approach that poivre structure and, and do it for 2023? Um, this, this is, this is, by the way, you know, just completely. I should say my supposition that it's poivre. I could be entirely and completely wrong, and if ever anybody from the Lauder or the Frederick Maltima watching this, they may be kind of laughing, saying, "Oh my goodness, how on earth could he think it's poivre? It's clearly not poivre." Um, but, but, but I think I think there are very, very, very strong similarities. The, the muskiness in. Um, as you head towards the base is very well done. Now, what are people going to complain about? I think with this one, people are going to, some people are going to complain about the fact that it veers towards the quiet side. So who was it that earlier said, is it going to be a more muted like Angelique sous la pluie? It's not as muted as that, but it's 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 not a huge sillage scent. And I think in an earlier video, we actually talked about this, didn't we? That it's like quiet is the new chic or quieter is the new chic. We've seen that from brands like Amouage, the where um, they just kind of seem to be wanting to turn the volume uh, knob down a little bit because being really, really loud and having a huge sillage is seen, I think, as a sign of the sort of more crass brands. And again, this is pure supposition on my part. Um, really, really, really taken with it. Let's, before I smell the pre-sprayed one, because I did do a pre-sprayed one, let me just very quickly read you the press release. Clove, pimento, ombrette, and carrot seed are joined by the sophisticated beauty of iris. Vetiver brings structure and vibrancy, facets of peach and prune roundness. Yes, thank you for that, because it also made me think of Edmund Rudnitska's old style in a way. And of course, Jean-Claude Elena is a huge admirer of Rudnitska. Indeed, the creation of the perfume had been so intense that Frederick Maltica stepped back in order to make sure um, his judgment of the scent wasn't clouded. In the end, he found that not only was the perfume even better than he remembered, but that in their improvising, the two had inadvertently created a modern reinvention of one of a, of a classic French perfume imprinted on their memories an eternal seduction simultaneously exotic and comforting. The new scent had the same complex understatements to both it conveyed an aristocratic warmth that drew one in and invited embrace. They had managed to translate the same understated femininity, appealing, irresistibly discreet, misleadingly ingenuous, quintessentially Parisian. Inspired in part by the intimacy of private worlds, the result is a modern rendering of a Parisian classic, understated, discreet and noble. Uh, it subtly draws one in. There are some typos here. Okay, the result is something we now appreciate more than ever, a private heaven. Interesting. And then it's the usual blurb about uh, Jean-Claude Eleanor that they haven't changed yet. Uh, Frederick Mao says, this is Jean-Claude Eleanor's exploration of warm spices. Clove, carrot seed, ombre, a new theme, theme, more symphonic than what he has done before and probably one of his masterpieces. Another typo. Somebody needs to check this press release. I'm very proud to have participated in this development alongside Jean-Claude. Um, and I should I should think he would be. Right, let's go to my pre-sprayed one to see what it's doing. So this was sprayed maybe about two hours ago now. So the individuality of the spices is, is now lost at the two-hour mark, and they've kind of blended into this general sense of just warmth but really really elegant it's it's it is that, that this 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 business of the sort of classic parisian understated chic is just so spot on but without doing vanilla and i guess actually what you get more of is the iris so it's again pierre bourdon's uh, iris poudre is like this very very cold quite cerebral iris this is like the warmer iris for frederick mal and I, I hope it does well. I really, really, really um, hope it does well. Gavin says, I feel it sounds like a strange choice to add to a range that includes Noir Epice. Okay, good point. Because this did not make me think of Noir Epice at all. Noir Epice for me is nutmeg and cinnamon, right? And that beautiful, beautiful musky um, base. Uh, and Noir Epice is more overtly masculine. Um, and quite 
quite physical. It's quite sort of testosterone, isn't it? It's quite, it's quite hairy chested. Um, this one is much more understated, much more urbane, much more buttoned up. Um, but it's got a kind of naughtiness to it, which is why I guess we have that name. Now, I'd, I, when I was first talking about this with a friend, we were both completely at cross purposes because I knew that Heaven Can Wait is a film reference, but the film that I had in my head was the Douglas Sirk movie, um, All That Heaven Allows. Um, the movie that my friend had in his head was Heaven's Gate. And then we both kind of went on IMDb and I discovered that actually there are two Heaven Can Wait movies. There's there's a 30s one, isn't there, or a 40s, and the Warren Beatty one. I, I think that the reference needs to be taken loosely because all of these sort of um, title references that Frederick Mal has done in the past have always been quite loose. Um, uh, what's, yeah, Portrait of a Lady, Music for a While. Uh, what's the other one that we had that was a kind of reference that that was very, very loose as well. Oh, there was. there's definitely another one. Carnal Flower. Carnal Flower is a, is a reference to a film as well, isn't it? So I, 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 I don't think we need to take that one too too heavily. Um, Rachel says, Mr. P, does any seasonality strike you about Heaven Can Wait? Would you wear it year round? I think I would want to... Well, but yeah, you know I would wear it all year round, but I think it, there's something autumnal about it. I think there's something about this kind of meeting point of warmth and coolness that, and, and it's kind of amber colored, okay, not amber scented. Um, Mark Tube says, I smelt it. The initial burst of iris creates a luxurious and sophisticated aura, while the rose adds a touch of timeless romance. Captivating and irresistible, another win for the house. I, th I think it is a win for the house, and I think we can all kind of quietly forget Uncut Gem, although Uncut Gem has been winning awards as well. And the Poivre. Poivre is pretty nice as well. If you could ever get your hands on a few drops of vintage Poivre um, extrait or anything, actually. And Gavin says, I think Douglas Sirk with that title. Yes, I completely thought, because then there was the Todd Haynes film, wasn't there, which was called... What was that? That had heaven in it as well, wasn't it? But the Julianne Moore film, oh, never mind. Oh, that's really going to bug me now. What was that called? So all that heaven allows is Douglas Sirk. Um, far from heaven says Paul thank you that was a good movie as well okay so do try this one do seek it out I think it's for the likes of you and me I think I think it's a sort of perfume geek fragrance and I will be very 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 interested to know what you think of it okay um we will be back in a couple of minutes with an unsealing unwrapping of two vintage Dior's. I'm really nervous because I hope they're going to be in good condition. Okay, see you in a bit. Bye now.